Then you'll sports center we go for our next team prediction of this offseason, and it's gonna be over the Indiana Hoosiers. The team that went four and eight overall in the 2022 season. Bit of a down season for Indiana. This wasn't the best team last season. Bow this team being 2023. And what can you expect out of the Hoosiers in the 2023 season? As we'll be talking about here today. We'll be analyzing this team and predict their schedule game by game in this video. Let's get started with a quick recap of 2022. Once again, the record being four and eight. And this is a team that actually got off to a strong start be it illinois 23 to 20 which you consider where illinois ended up last year they were a solid team last year especially on defense and so i mean that was a nice win there and that's a win that definitely aged well last season you also beat idaho and western kentucky both games uh, by a couple of scores with a quick recap of 2022, once again, the record being 4-8. and eight. This is a team that actually got off to a strong start. Beat Illinois 23-20, to 20, which turns out Illinois was a solid team last year. So that was a win that definitely aged well over the course of the season. Then you beat Idaho 35-22, to 22, beat Western Kentucky 33-30. to 30. So uh, this team started out the season 3-0, but things kind of went downhill from there. Lost to Cincinnati and Nebraska, then lost to Michigan, lost to Maryland by five, Rutgers by a touchdown. So a five-game losing streak heading into the bye. Then he came back and had to play Michigan State and Ohio State on the road. Both games were... Uh, ugly losses and it was just it's tough playing both of them back to back but came back after that and then beat Michigan State on the road 39-31 in double overtime so a nice win there and then lost to Purdue 30-16 to to finish out the regular season so I mean there's no hiding it bit of a disappointing season for Indiana and I mean you got to consider it too this is a team that uh, can play at a decently high level you consider a couple of the years ago this team was a contender in the Big Ten in 2020. They were the second place team in the Big Ten East. I think that's something a lot of people forget about. This was a solid team there uh, between 2019 and 2020. And things have kind of gone downhill since. But, I mean, with Tom Allen, this is a team that can play at a high level for Indiana being a school that's not known for football. So, I mean, there's potential on this team. And with that, let's look forward to 2023 with your roster preview. Connor Bazelak is transferring out. He's headed to his third school now. He actually transferred in from, obviously, Mizzou heading into 2022. And he was decent in 2022 nothing special really 2300 yards uh, 13 touchdowns 10 picks a 55 percent completion rate so i mean he definitely could have been better a bit of an inconsistent quarterback um and so you got Taven jackson coming in from tennessee which he definitely has i think a higher ceiling than basilac we haven't seen too much of Taven jackson uh but he's a quarterback that i think has got a lot uh definitely a higher ceiling than basilac considering connor basilac has played in college for several years now uh the backfield though sean shivers is gone the top rusher for this team who uh, put up over 700 yards of offense but josh henderson is coming back and i um, mean so there's some potential in this backfield here for sure even though you're losing your top there uh, the receiving core cam camber is coming back the lead in receiving nearly 600 yards you do lose your second and fourth though in the receiving core with emory simmons and then DJ Matthews, but Anderson Kobe is also coming back, who was the third. So now the receiving core, a couple of losses, but overall, uh, there's still some potential there. And defensively, that's really where this team is going to look different. Uh, losing three key players on the D-line, two linebackers, and then five in the secondary. Not all these players are starters, but they at least had an impact on this team last season so this defense is going to look a lot different offensively there will definitely be a few changes but i see potential at least offensively for this team i do think they definitely could be better in 2023 but defensively i've got a lot of uncertainties and i do think i mean there's potential defensively as well but uh, just a lot of uncertainty there that's for sure and i mean so it brings to the question where is the ceiling for indiana can this team be at least decent in 2023 and I mean, I think so. I mean, you consider Tom Allen. I mean, he's a coach that uh, a couple of years ago, this team was good and they really didn't have high expectations heading into, especially 2019 when this team actually got up to eight wins. I mean, and, and so you consider that and those two seasons. I mean, this is a team that can perform uh, despite maybe not having high expectations. So could this be a surprise team in 2023? Maybe, but I will say this as well. Their schedule is not easy and for Indiana, uh, that is something to be a bit concerned about. But with that, let's look at the transfer portal and recruiting now. Taven Jackson coming in from Tennessee. Obviously, you do lose a couple of quarterbacks. Jack Tuttle, uh, who was a backup quarterback last season. He's off to Michigan. Connor Bazelak off to Bowling Green. You got Christian Turner coming in from 
uh, Wake Forest. He's a running back. You could expect him to have an immediate impact, although he is listed as the third running back on the depth chart right now. Uh, A.J. Barner is off to Michigan, tight end, and then you bring in uh, Dequees Carter, who's expected to have an immediate impact. He's actually expected to be a starter. Uh, E.J. Williams is in there as well, coming in from Clemson. You do lose Emory Simmons, though, off to Utah as well. Malachi Holt-Bennett is off to UAB, a receiver from last season. You do bring in a couple of defensive linemen here. Both these guys should be starters in 2023. Andre Carter and then Philip Blitty, uh, linebacker to San McCullough. This is a tough loss here. He's off to Oklahoma. Uh, definitely one of the key players of this defense last season. But you bring in three guys here that definitely could have immediate impacts with uh, Jacob Mangum Farrar, J Jamier Johnson, and then Nicholas Toomer all coming in from different places. So uh, it's definitely good you're adding some depth there. But you do lose Christopher Keyes, defensive back, off to Mississippi State. So several key losses, but the good thing is this team is bringing in a lot of key transfers. I mean, you could say five, six, maybe seven of these guys that I've just listed uh, that are coming in are going to be starters in 2023. There's definitely a possibility of that. So that's definitely a good thing is that this team is bringing in some talent uh, to replace some talent that they lost. But recruiting-wise, 69th in the country, 14th in the Big Ten. So the last place team in the Big Ten as far as recruiting goes heading into 2023. Got 15 three-stars coming in. So, I mean, considering that, I've got this team at a 6 out of 10 on the future forecast meter. I think the future is still good for this team. I mean, I still think Tom Allen's a good coach. We saw him have success with this team between 2019 and 2020, which, I mean, in case you don't remember, this team in 2020 was actually a Big Ten contender. They were the second-place team in the Big Ten East, yes, over Michigan and over Penn State. And so, I mean, this is a team that still has got potential in the future. I think for the immediate future, the expectations should be pretty low, especially for 2023, just because of the uncertainty and the lack of depth uh, especially on defense for this team. But I mean, we've seen Tom Allen have success. I know 2021 and even 2022 were a bit disappointing, especially 2021. But, I mean, this team was ranked 17th in the preseason heading into 2021. But, I mean, I still think Indiana is a team that can be good. They're not really known for being a strong football school. That's just, uh, this is a basketball school. But, I mean, there's still potential in the future for this team. I've got them at a 6 out of 10. But with that, Let's take a look at the schedule now. Looking forward to 2023, and you start out with uh, a game that is about as tough as it gets. You got to take on Ohio State, and it is at home, but Ohio State is a powerhouse, and that's a team that is going to be brutal to beat. They're uh, they're going to be strong once again in 2023. Could see them definitely uh, being back in the college football playoffs. So a really challenging game there in Week One. Then you got Indiana State Week Two, winnable game there. Then Louisville. As one of your non-conference games, that's an interesting matchup there. Uh, that will be in Indianapolis, and then Akron at home, then Maryland on the road, Michigan on the road. You got Rutgers at home, Penn State on the road. Then in November, you got Wisconsin at home, Illinois on the road, then Michigan State at home, and then Purdue on the road to finish out the regular season. So it's definitely a challenging schedule. I mean, you considering you know, your crossover games into the Big Ten West, you got to play Wisconsin, you got to play Illinois on the road, you got to play Purdue on the road. Purdue is probably the easiest of those three games, but Wisconsin should be, I'd say, really good once again. And, I mean, they're going to be back, I really think, with Fluke Fickle. So, and that's still a team with a lot of talent. And then you got Illinois, of course, who uh, defensively should be pretty strong once again. So, uh, it's a challenging schedule. Plus, I mean, you're, it's really not doing you any favors having to play Ohio State in Week 1. But looking at September, I do think you lose to Ohio State. I just think they're too good of a team and for week one considering uh, Indiana is going to be a team with a lot of uncertainty a bit of inexperience it's going to be tough playing Ohio State there in week one so I do think you drop that one then Indiana State week two you get a nice win there you beat them and then Louisville I can get a nice win here Louisville next season could be halfway decent I do think they're uh, somewhere between a six and eight win team so I've got you beating Louisville, which is a decent team there. So you get a nice win, and then Akron uh, beat them pretty easily. So you're 3-1 and one heading into the second month, which is a pretty good position to be in. I think that's probably your best-case scenario there. And then Maryland and Michigan both on the road. Tough games here. Maryland next season should be a pretty solid team. I like them a lot. Could be 8- or 9-win team. And then Michigan on the road. Michigan is going to be brutal once again. That's a team that is... Uh, playing some really good ball right now. They could be even better in 2023. Really wouldn't be surprised if uh, they went on and finally won that national title, which the past two years, they've been a major contender for that. Just couldn't quite uh, make it to the title game either year. But 
Michigan's going to be tough. I do think you lose that one. Then Rutgers at home. You get a nice win here uh, at home after a couple of tough losses. Then Penn State on the road. Uh, same story with that Michigan game. Penn State's going to be solid once again in 2023. Uh, they're definitely a team that could be a contender as well. And uh, for all we know, Penn State could maybe top Michigan or Ohio State this season. Penn State is talented enough to do that. Uh, so we'll see what they can do. But do you think you drop that one to Penn State? So you're four and four heading into November. You got Wisconsin at home, which I mean, there's a chance maybe you pull off a big upset win over Wisconsin there. But I do think you drop that one in the end. Wisconsin's defense uh, should be back. And honestly, offensively, they finally. Uh, might be decent now with a new head coach in there. I mean, Wisconsin's always known for uh, their strong defenses and uh, their really strong running backs. And so I think that's going to change now with a new coaching staff uh, for the better, I do think. But uh, Wisconsin, a tough team. I do think it's close, but you lose that one. Then Illinois on the road. I think you drop this one too. Illinois defensively should be pretty strong. Offensively, they're going to struggle, I think, especially in the early part of the season. So I think you dropped that one to Illinois, but a close game. The Michigan State and Purdue, both games winnable, but both games losses, I think. Uh, Michigan State should be improved. Purdue's a team that I think is kind of close to Indiana's level in 2023, uh, but I do think you dropped that one as well. So 4-8 is the record for next season, kind of right around the same as where this team was in 2022, but I do think this is a tougher schedule than the last season. Uh, but the ceiling is 6-6 six six for this team. You could get to a bowl game. That's kind of at the top end of this team's range, just with a lot of the uncertainty on this team. And four is too intense. That's the worst this team could potentially be. I'm pretty comfortable saying uh, this team will be between four and five wins in 2023. It's just a team that has got a lot of uncertainty right now. We've seen Tom Allen's teams. I mean, a couple of years ago, this team was pretty good. And really, I mean, heading into 2019, this is a team that had very low expectations. So we could maybe see this team surprise again. Uh, Tom Allen has proven that, but uh, it's definitely a team to uh, still keep an eye on. We'll see if they can surprise in 2023, but let me know your thoughts in the comments below on this team, and I appreciate you guys all watching as always. Stay tuned for more from All Sports Central. Catch you on the next one.